Well, Shamai everyone, and welcome to another video. Now today, I'm blessed. I'm back in Snowdonia. Those of you who know the National Park well will recognize that mountain behind. It is, of course, the distinctive peak of uh, Trafan. One of those that I'd love to climb at some point. Looks pretty tough. Anyway, I will say also that if you've, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, then you might well recognize that I was in this spot only about a month ago. And in fact, that time I wasn't alone. I came up to this amazing spot with my girlfriend, Lou. Part halfway up this route, there's a gorgeous lake and uh, we camped there for the night. But that is where I had a great time, but Lou realized wild camping wasn't for her. And she said right, right there, she's never doing it again. And she's gonna put all her gear on eBay. <laughs> oh, sometimes I can't say I blame her. Sometimes, I even think I'm a bit mad sometimes doing this. I am knackered and sweat, the sweat is pouring off me. Anyway, enough moaning. The plan today is to, uh, is to get to the lake, cool off a little bit, and then push on towards the summit, which uh, is around a thousand meters. So it's not gonna be an easy one, but it's just gone, it's just gone quarter past two, and I've allowed myself about four hours to do this. So there's no real hurry. We'll just see how we go. Hopefully I'll get to the top, and I'm hoping that there's, I don't know, there's a view, and that I'm not sort of stuck in the clouds. We'll see how we get on. Well, I'm actually really surprised. It's uh, only quarter to three, I've been going less than an hour, and I'm already pretty much level with the lake. You'll see that in, see that in a little bit. But yeah, I've now entered, uncharted territory. This is as far as we got before and it's looking pretty damn steep. You can if I look over there towards Trafan, you can see how high we've already climbed. You know, when I started off, that looked mighty impressive. And uh, yeah, you can see now, I suppose we're probably about three quarters of the way up here. The lake that you'll see is about 700 meters. So I say uh, there's only about 300 meters to go. I'll say only, that's still, still nearly a thousand feet. So I think this is where I stop filming because I'm gonna start blowing out of my bottom <laughs> as per usual. But I suppose it's all good exercise and I'm hoping that view at the top will, be make, will make it all more than worth it. Let's keep battling on. Oh, well, look at what we have here. Tell you, things just got pretty interesting all of a sudden. I'm following this path and it just seems to be getting pretty precarious. But I tell you what, I, did, I love an adventure. It certainly turned into that. A lot tougher than I thought it would be. I just, uh, yeah, I want the adventure, I want the thrills. I just want to keep it safe. I mean, look at this. Plenty of places to put the feet. And thank God it's dry. If this was wet, I don't think I'd even be attempting it. But yeah, main thing is I think, get, make sure all the hands are free and the feet. And uh, I'll see you at the top, hopefully. <laughs> Let's do it. Woo. <laughs> I'm so relieved to get to the top of that. Join the path again, and it has flattened out a little bit for now. But I think this is a good place to get the breath back and admire that view. Check it out. Unbelievable. And I'm not sure if you can make out, just behind your fan there, you can see those other mountains, which again, must be around a thousand meters. And I can see a beautiful looking lake at the bottom of there as well. So uh, there's so many opportunities to just brilliant, just great exploring and wild camping as well. Cracking place. Got no idea how high I am now. I reckon I've got to be around 800 meters. So a couple hundred to go and it's just, just gone three o'clock. Let's keep going. Oh, I've just stopped to take a breather have a quick drink of water. And also, admire this lake. To apologize, I didn't tell you the name of it before. If, uh, I mean, I have included a link of uh, the camping trip that I did with Lou in the, uh, well, below this video. So if you feel free to check that out. But in case you don't want to, yeah, this lake is called, I believe, uh, Finon Chloe. <laughs> it's about as good as my Welsh pronunciation is gonna do, I'm afraid. Apologies if I completely butcher the language. But yeah, you might see, sort of on the far side there, you might see like a small stream feeding into it. That is where we camped before. 
And that up there, that is the highest point, which I believe is... Uh, oh, uh, do you know, actually, I was going to tell you the name of it, but I've completely forgotten. I'll have to have a look at my map. That's the thing with these Welsh names. <laughs> if you haven't got a really good memory, they're very, very easy to forget. And that's the summit there. I thought I was going to be right near the top. Still a little way to go, but I can see a couple of people up there as well. So at least I'm not going to be completely alone. Right, let's push on to the summit and I'll see you at the top of the world. Well, pretty much made it to the first summit. Final few steps. I tell you, that was a tough one. But so much easier just with a day pack and not a full on backpack. Here goes. Here's your pile of stones that marks it out. And as always, not sure if you meant to do it, but I always touch the top brick, or top stone, sorry. Ah, oh, I believe this mountain is called Penio Wen, and it's about 970 meters. Not bad going, eh? And you can see we are well and truly up in the clouds here. Oh, what an achievement. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna spin the camera around now, and I'm gonna show you sort of where I'm heading. It looks absolutely incredible. Here you go, so from this summit, you've got a proper ridge line. Might be able to make out a couple of uh, hikers there. It's annoying that the clouds seem to be coming in. I'm hoping they do one because uh, all the way up, I've been able to see those mountain tops. They go all the way along. And the great thing is the highest mountain is about 1,065 meters. So it's only about, it's, it's less than 100 meters higher than where we are now. So there's not much more climbing to do. Oh, fantastic. I'll tell you what, it's pretty nippy up here. So I'm gonna get the fleece on and then get moving again. Well, I've got no idea what this is. Is it natural? Is it man-made? Is, uh, is it a cairn of some sort? Or is it even a, uh, a stone volcano? I've got absolutely no idea. Any of you watching who might know, please, please, please do, please, please comment below and solve the mystery. Let's keep picking our way through the boulder field. That is what this path just turned into all of a sudden. Well, here we go, check this out. This looks, what I can only describe as being like a bit like the moon. Incredible landscape. And what's so amazing today, you know, we are somewhere between sort of 950 and 1,000 metres up, and there is not a breath of wind. I mean, annoyingly, the clouds come in a bit, so I don't know what visibility is going to be like at the next summit. But at least I can film, and I can actually hear myself, and you can hear me as well. But what an incredible place. I'm guessing all of these rocks are here because of glaciers. You know, going back to the last ice age, I guess this whole area, you know, it was carved by ice. A lot of those lakes, including that one that you saw earlier, I mean, that was a quarry where the glacier would have started. It's incredible, really, that you still see the evidence of it. All these, you know, thousands and thousands of years later. Anyway, enough of the geography lesson. I'm pushing on towards the next summit. I did see a couple about 20 minutes back and they said it would be sort of less than half an hour. So we'll get there, see if there's any sort of view and then just work out if I've got time to push on to, I don't know, the final, the final summit, which happens to be the highest as well. Let's see how we do. So I thought, uh, that, well, that's, that is actually the highest point. I've just thought I reached about five minutes ago. I actually thought this point, hit point here was a little bit higher, but uh, my mistake. But that summit was uh, 1,044 metres, Carne Dafid, I believe its name is. And uh, yeah, when you think about it, I mean, that, that height is only about 40 metres shy of Snowden's height. So, or if you like thinking feet, what is that? About 100 and, 120 feet. Incredible, really. And yet you think probably, I mean, I know we're midweek, so it's always going to be quieter, but it's also, you know, the end of July and we're in the, you know, the summer holidays. So I bet Snowden is absolutely rammed full of people today. You know, I have seen Facebook images of people queuing just to get, just to stand on the summit. Whereas up here, there's hardly anyone around. <clears throat> it really is an incredible place to walk. And the best thing of all is the fact that these clouds are starting to lift as well. I mean, look at that view to that side. I'll tell you, I'll come off the path a little bit just so you get a bit of a better view down into the valley. Look at it. Wow. <laughs> it's a bit scary to think that I have got to get my way, find my way down there as well at some point. But the plan now is to head on to the final summit, which I believe is Carned Llewellyn. And that one is only 20 metres higher than Duffid. So there shouldn't be that much climbing, that much more climbing involved. Let's keep heading across the moon surface and I'll see you 
at the uh, third and final summit. Let's go. Oh. So do you know, I've gone to introduce the summit of Carned Llewellyn at least three times, and each time I've been wrong. Thankfully, the, there was an Italian couple that I met back at the last summit, and uh, yeah, they happened to be carrying GPS, and the guy put me right and sort of said that it was about half a kilometer from where we are now. So here, GPS, I've realized when you're doing these sorts of walks, it's a handy thing to have, because as you can see, you know, the conditions have really come in. Luckily, the path's pretty clear at the moment, but when we were back, back about a kilometer or so ago, it was actually really hard to actually work out where it was. Thank God he was there. <laughs> but yeah, final, final push after that, it will be all downhill, hopefully, to the car. I'll see you at the summit. <laughs> Not expecting much of you, but I'll see you there anyway. Well, I reckon I'm not far from the summit. There you go, you've got another stone shelter. And if I come round, I'm reckoning that this has got to be the summit here. You know, it's, it's hard to tell because there's no visibility, but I can't really see anywhere higher. This must be it. Would well, you know, I'm going to claim it is anyway, even if, I, even if I'm not 100% sure. Tell you what, there's the highest stone. Ah, there we go. Carned Llewellyn done. 1,064 metres, I believe. So this one is only, yeah, 20 metres shy of Snowden. What's that, about 70 feet? And, well, hopefully I'm going to see the Italian couple here soon. But other than that, there is absolutely nobody here. The tricky bit now, though, is trying to get my way off this mountain. I wasn't going to retrace my steps. There should be a path heading south from from the, uh, well, from the cairn in the middle. So uh, I'm hoping that if I start heading in that direction there, I'm gonna pick up a path of sorts. It's a little bit worrying. I'm not panicking just yet, because there's plenty of hours of daylight left, but bloody, I do wish there was visibility. It'd be a lot easier. The height, so I suppose challenges, they will make us stronger, aren't they? So uh, I reckon this one is definitely gonna be that. Let's go another nose. Well, guys, I'm pretty much five hours in and I'm nearing the end now. To be honest, I've not filmed most of the descending because it has been pretty steep and pretty precarious. But I've really, really enjoyed it. And I mean, the views all the way along have been absolutely incredible. I mean, that valley behind is just, I mean, look at it. It's just absolutely stunning. I'm not sure if you can hear like the waterfall in the river, you know, as it cascades its way down towards the reservoir just there <laughs> but I tell you the Carnadale range they're really really special and it's just it's it's amazing that it's so quiet I mean I've seen you know we're in the middle of summer and I've seen less than 10 people in five hours up here I mean that's incredible everyone goes to Snowden but this is a place as well that is you know if you want to get off the beaten track a little bit and uh have some real peace and quiet and amazing views like this and get yourself here. This hike is awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully I've inspired you to maybe get out here as well and do something similar. Might look scary, but I tell you, you make memories and you'll probably be boring people with stories about your trip for, uh, <laughs> for months, for weeks and weeks and weeks to come. I know I certainly do. Anyway, I'm waffling. Thank once again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and to also subscribe because you know me, it won't be long until the feet get itchy and I'm out there again somewhere. 
until then, take care of yourselves. And if you're out there adventuring, enjoy. See you later, guys.